Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban. We will first read the verses and then we will go through them and their meanings word by word. Hubbuki ya amiqat al aynain. Tatarrufun, tasawwufun, ibada. Hubbuki mithlu al mawti wal wilada. Sa'abun bi an yu'ada marratain. The first word that we have here is hub, and that means love, and attached to that at the end is ki, which means your, feminine, speaking to a woman, hubbuki, your love, or it could be loving you. The u above the b is a case ending, it is for the nominative case, which shows that hub is the subject of the sentence. Yeah. Oh. Amiqat al So amiq means deep. Amiqa is the feminine. And amiqat al This is a fairly common structure in Arabic. O oh, deep of the two eyes. So in al aynain we've got the word ain which means eye. Aynain is two eyes. The dual form. And what's going on here? So you've got the adjective amiqa, which refers to the whole person. And Then you've got the particular part of the person which that adjective is actually referring to. In this case, the eyes. So, O deep one of the two eyes. In other words, the one with two deep eyes. We've got this structure in English. One example I can think of is short of breath. So, he was feeling short of breath. In other words, he was running out of breath. So, He was short. Was the whole person short? No, he was short of breath. In other words, his breath was short, right? And we've got the same structure here. A deep of the two eyes. In other words, a woman with the two deep eyes, or as I've translated it elsewhere, the two fathomless eyes. Right. Next we have the rest of the sentence. So, what is your love or what is loving you? It is tatarrufun. So, tatarruf, the root word is taraf, which means edge. And tatarruf is the fifth form of the verb, the verbal noun. And that develops the idea of the edge here. Tatarov is actually going all the way to the edge, to the extreme. So loving you is extreme. It takes me all the way to the edge. Tasawwufun, another fifth form verbal noun. And Tasawwuf is usually translated as Sufism, which is the mystical branch of the Islamic sciences. And the root word is suf, which means wool, because the Sufis, the practitioners of Sufism, were said to have worn very simple woolen garments. It could also be uh, sophia, the Greek word for wisdom, because Sufis also often pursued wisdom. And... Here we have tatarrufun tasawwufun, which are often meant to be opposites. And the idea is that uh, loving you feels sometimes like an act of extremism, other times like an act of mysticism, and then other times like an ibadah, worship. So ibadah is... Uh, from the word abd, 
or rather uh, it's from the same root as the word abd, which means servant or slave, as in abdullah, servant of God. And ibadah is the act of adoring or worshipping or expressing your servitude to a particular being. So loving you is an experience which takes me to the edge, which uh, takes me up to mystical heights, which feels like an act of worship. Then we have the third line, and again we have hubbuki, your love or loving you, mithl, like al mauti. Mithlul Mauti, Maut, death. And why does Maut have the Kasra, the E vowel at the end? Because it's in the genitive case. What puts it in the genitive case? Well, as we know, it can be one of two things, either possession or a preposition. In this case, we've got the preposition, which is the word Mithl, like Wa Al Wilada, and birth. So loving you or your love is like death and birth. In what way is it like death and birth? Well, the explanation is given here. Sa'ab, which means difficult. Bi'an, that. Yu'ad. Now, a'ada uh, ya'udu is to return, and a'ada yu'idu is to repeat. And here we have the passive, so to be repeated. So it is difficult for it to be repeated, or it is difficult that it is repeated. Marratain. And the word marra means time, and marratain means two times because you've got the ain ending, which puts it into the dual. Okay? And that word marratain rhymes with the word. Ainain at the end of the first line. And the word Saab is interesting because uh, it's often used in Arabic to mean something a little bit more than simply difficult. In English, uh, if something is expressed to be difficult, it can still be considered to be doable. That's often the case in Arabic. However, with things that are considered impossible, we often have this tendency to use the word sa'ab to refer to them because uh, we think that they're impossible, but maybe there is somehow a way of doing them. So rather than simply saying that they are mustahil, that there's absolutely no way, there might be a way. So we fall short of saying Mustahil, um, we fall short of saying that they are completely impossible and that they are simply seemingly impossible. In other words, very, very difficult. Saab. And we can translate it as it is difficult for it to happen twice, but um, then that doesn't work with death and birth, which generally don't happen twice as far as we can see. So we can translate Saab as defying as um, it defies happening twice over so or it defies repetition there we go <laughs> loving you O oh you with the fathomless eyes تطرفن تصوفن عبادة is extreme, is mystic, is worship. Hubbuki mithlul mauti wal wilada. Loving you is like death or birth. Sa'abun bi an yu'ad maratain. It defies repetition.